Hi, I'm Dan Sandine, and I co-direct the Electronic Visualization Laboratory with Tom DeFonte and Maxine Brown. And our work in the last couple of years has been centered on teleimmersive systems, has been centered on a combination of virtual reality and networking to allow people in remote, remote locations to share a three-dimensional experience, share a three-dimensional model, and see and talk to each other, whether they're in the next room on two eye desks or whether they're on opposite sides of the planet. The video avatar work that we've been doing here uh, uses a very simple concept of taking video images, uh, cutting them out by a keying process, and properly inserting them in the three-dimensional scene relative to the rest of the environment so that you can see their relationship, you can see their gestures, um, and you can see expression and body language. Uh, the most commonly used avatar is the puppet avatar, and indeed that's used routinely at EVL, and does communicate several important things like where you are relative to the model and a certain amount of gestural information, at least in terms of where the wand is pointing. But the video avatar communicates much more body language and expression, um, and it's very easy to recognize the person you're talking to. What I'm going to do now is go upstairs and exchange positions with Alex and tell you more about this as a video avatar. Hi, Alex. I'd like to tell you a little bit about this 3D scene that we're mutually immersed in. Uh, this is the microscope room, the electron microscope room at Argonne National Laboratories. And this uh, room, this model of this room was created to familiarize researchers with the microscope laboratory before they arrived so that they could learn to use it more quickly. Uh, the consoles behind me are essentially the controls for the microscope. Uh, an important aspect of the creation of this model is that it was created by trucking a video camera in the environment and from that both extracting the texture maps and the three-dimensional information that specifies the consoles themselves. This was a much more effective technique than the laborious process of measuring the consoles and essentially redrawing all of that detail into the scene. The rest of the room, the floor, and the rest of the room were created by a conventional modeling process. Now, I'm immersed in this scene, and although it's a little bit non-physical, I can, for instance, go behind the consoles here and uh, disappear from scene. And now I'll come back to my original position, uh, showing that I'm kind of, I have a proper uh, 3D relationship to the uh, model around me. Uh, now what I'd like to do is uh, show you a model of the solar wind. Uh, in this application, we're showing the magnetic field lines around the sun. Uh, this large prominence over here um, is essentially a large amount of material being ejected from the sun, which will be traveling towards the Earth. Uh, the rest of the field lines you see are more normal for the magnetic field that surrounds the sun. Now near the millennium, we're entering a period of very high solar activity. And these kinds of prominences may disrupt our electrical power grid or our communications. I'm going to take a moment to discuss a couple limitations of the current video avatar and some future work. First of all, we're a long distance from it appearing like there's a person next to you in virtual reality space, which is the real goal. There are two major limitations of the work at present. One is that the video avatar is actually two-dimensional, but immersed properly in a three-dimensional space. We really need to make the avatar three-dimensional in a three-dimensional space. A second limitation is in order to do the cutout, um, we have to have quite controlled lighting and a controlled background. And this, I think, is just not practical in most research situations. There are two approaches we're using to move this research along. One is that instead of projecting the texture map onto a flat polygon, we're going to project the texture map onto a 3D model of the person. And that will solve two problems. One is that there will be a three-dimensional aspect to the avatar because it will be projected onto a three-dimensional model. And secondly, since the texture map will not appear where the model isn't, it will do a proper cutout of the model. The major problem with doing that is not theoretical but practical. 
one has to register the camera space with the tracker space in both space and time. And that, from a practical point of view, is very difficult, although we're making great progress in that direction. A second approach we're taking is depth from stereo. By using multiple cameras, we can extract a three-dimensional point cloud of the image and then surface that by a variety of techniques to produce, again, a three-dimensional avatar within a three-dimensional space. Adding more cameras will allow us to take either of those approaches to a 360-degree view of an avatar.